I'm Judy Woods, 3216 Washington Street. And at the risk of you accusing me of beating a dead horse, I want to spend just a couple of minutes talking to you about this water fluoridation issue. Um, I sent to all the council members these 50 reasons to oppose water fluoridation. Mayor, your email, my email to you came back, and you might want to visit with your IT people about that. Maybe your mailbox is full, but I went through the city website and it bounced back to me, and I don't know why. I get emails all the time, so I'm fairly sure that it's not over full. But please go ahead. Okay. Um, okay, I think part of the problem is that we're dealing with an apples and oranges situation here. Uh, it's been shown over and over that the direct application of fluoride to the teeth does indeed prevent tooth decay. Lots and lots of studies, nobody can dispute that fact. But the direct application means sealant, it means uh, varnish, um, various rinses that a dentist can apply, and also fluoride toothpaste does the same thing. There has never been a study that showed any efficacy whatsoever to ingesting or swallowing fluoride. And in fact, if you'll consult all of the references at the end of this document, there have been many, many studies that do show there is harm in ingesting fluoride. One of the problems is that when you put it in the city water, there's no way to control the dosage. So someone who drinks eight glasses of water a day is getting twice as much fluoride as someone who drinks four glasses of water a day. And by body weight, proportion, children are getting a much higher load than adults are. The other thing is that because our bodies were not designed to ingest fluoride, we don't have a good way to excrete it. So although some of it <coughs> is excreted from the body, there's always some that remains and it's stored in the bones and it can lead to problems there. So if a very young child an infant who's drinking formulas prepared with fluoridated water is starting to get that load into their bones and it will never go away. <clears throat> now, I know that one of the main reasons that people want to fluoridate the water is to make sure that they can prevent tooth decay in parts of the po population that may not be able to afford regular dental care. However, it has been shown, again, that the communities across the U.S. that have the largest problem with tooth decay are ones where fluoridation has been in place for more than 20 years. And the <coughs> fluoridation in the water has had no effect on the incidence of tooth decay. So, I hope that you will take a few minutes to read through this, Mayor. I'll give you this copy. Okay. Um, and I would, I know that you are just trying to do the right thing. And so I would like for you to be a little better informed about this issue. But I respectfully submit to you that our $50,000 would be better spent distributing fluoride toothpaste to all of the households in Greenville. Thank you. Thank you. Corey Watkins. Mayor, Council, appreciate that. I know. Let me come up here. Um, I'm going to reiterate what she said, Mayor. I tried to please, get it. Please give your name uh, and address. Corey Watkins, 7760 Cochise Street. Um, I sent you an email as well, Mayor, and it came back to me, so um, I'm not sure what's going on there. But I'm going to touch base on the same thing with the water, with the water fluoridation. Um, you should never use the water public supply to deliver medication to people because, like she said, um, and like many doctors and scientists have said, uh, you're not controlling, you can't control the dose that way. So why somebody drinks one glass of water and somebody else drinks eight glasses of water, somebody else is getting a higher dosage. 97% uh, of Europe does not fluoridate their water. Many places across the world have banned fluoridation from their water. And many cities here in the United States are starting to do the same because of 
uh, research and, and other things coming out from doctors and scientists. Um, one of the council members here, I got an email back from saying that uh, there's a 70 year study uh, over uh, many scientists and, and it's unanimous and um, that's not true. This is, this is not a unanimous uh, study from uh, scientists and doctors. There's many other doctors and scientists who are speaking out about uh, fluoride, fluoride in the water. Um, if you get some time, try to look into Dr. Paul Conant. He has plenty of books and he also has an 80 page uh, research coming from scientists and doctors which they've done studies and uh, it speaks out against the dangers of fluoride in, in the water. Um, you can't control the dose and it goes against the consent of an individual who you are forcing to drink this medication. Um, the, 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 it goes against the individual rights um, for, uh, to put, uh, put fluoride in the public water. Uh, putting fluoride in the water is definitely unconstitutional and uh, somebody who wants medication should probably go to the doctor or a dentist to get fluoride if they want. Other people who are just trying to drink the public water shouldn't be forced to have medication in the water as well. So I'm strongly urging the city and the uh, council here to try to bring this back up for discussion. Um, I also do know that uh, one of the reasons why fluoride was taken out of the water here in Greenville is because the fluoride was killing the lead off of uh, the pipes and putting lead into uh, putting lead into the water and people are drinking lead and fluoride and that's double dangerous. So uh, some of the older homes that have lead pipes um, and there's many old homes here in Greenville where people are still living and still running water. Um, the fluoride is ripping the lead off the pipes and putting lead in, into the water as well and that's very dangerous. Thank you for your time. What did you say the name of that doctor was? Uh, Dr. Paul Conant. Thank you. Thank you. Tracy Young. No. Nancy Estrada. My name is Nancy Estrada, and my address is 800 Tomahawk Road in Quinlan, Texas. And I am going to be speaking on fluoride. I didn't know I was going to be speaking, but. Um, I did email some of the people from City Council this week, and I sent an email letting you guys know of, um, about the type of fluoride that we're considering putting in the water. And I called Mr. James Belcher, uh, the water plant superintendent, um, on the 20th, and I asked him to spell out for me the type of fluoride that we would be putting in the water. And he said it was fluorosilic acid. <coughs> so um, fluorosilic acid and natural fluoride are not the same thing. Um, fluorosilic acid is a byproduct of the phosphate fertilizer industry, and it's basically toxic waste. Um, it's captured in air pollutants so that it doesn't do in, like a significant amount of damage in the environment. And we have seen this happen before. That's why they started capturing it in air pollutants uh, devices. And so uh, another doctor, a uh, scientist that you probably want to look up is Dr. John Duell. Um, and he ended up writing a book um, about the toxicity of fluoride, and it has now been labeled an endocrine disruptor. Um, and that pretty much uh, is self-explanatory. It is uh, something that disrupts the endocrine system in the human body. And so I did some homework on the human anatomy and the endocrine system, and this stuff is basically shutting it down and slowing down the endocrine system. Some of the uh, big uh, top uh, illnesses that we're seeing in America is coming from the endocrine system not working properly. And so um, there is a website called the Fluoride Action Network, and there is 
thousands of doctors that are coming and signing uh, this um, to stop water fluoridation, to stop putting the, there's not, as, as long as we've been having water fluoridation for almost 70 years, there have no, been not enough tests being done uh, to let us know that this is something that we need to be practicing. I'm just concerned about the citizens and I just want to protect and serve as you guys are doing. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you. Hal Atkins. <laughs>